Welcome to the celebration of the Epiphany of the Lord at All Saints Parish. We encourage you to participate as fully as possible, to kneel if you're able, to stand where appropriate, and certainly to fully acclaim the acclamations. We also encourage you to light a candle in the space where you're watching this recorded Mass to remind us all of the light of Christ and that Christ calls all of us to be his light, especially on this day when we celebrate the arrival of the kings bringing their gifts and we celebrate the greatest gift of all, the gift of a savior. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our recorded Mass here at All Saints Parish. Let's continue to pray for those who have received the coronavirus, those who have died of it, those who are grieving, and pray to keep us all safe. Thank you. Joining us in person today are Tina Schutte, our musician. Bonnie Wink is going to be our lecturer. Mike Wathen is our cameraman. And uh, Peggy Epley and Amy Eager will put it all together so that you can view it on whatever you're viewing. It's good to have you all with us this morning. Thank you for your assistance. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers, and, my brothers and sisters, the Lord comes to us in many ways. Let's take a moment to reflect on how God has come to us of late. Lord God, we know that you are always with us. Sometimes you make your appearance known that we cannot miss. Sometimes it's very subtle. Sometimes we are aware of it. Sometimes we are not. Sometimes we ignore it. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold your beauty, the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Now, if you have your Bible handy, I would suggest that you take it out and open it up to the book of the prophet Isaiah. And towards the end of that book, you will find chapter 60. And we're beginning with verse 1. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. And God promises us through the prophet that he will bring light in our darkness. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thickness, thick darkness, the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your hearts shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, 
and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks God. be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, O God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, O God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. And our leaders, O God, with your judgment and with your justice on everyone. For you govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with righteousness. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, O God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in your days, and peace till the moon be no more. May your kingdom reach from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, O God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Tarshish and the isles shall bring tribute and gifts from Seba and Arabia. And other powers shall pay for their homage, and every nation shall serve the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, O God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For you shall rescue the poor when they cry out, and they afflicted when help can't be found. You shall raise up the lowly and the poor, and those on high shall be cast down. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, O God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The next reading is taken from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning with verse 2. The letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, Verse 2. And here God reminds us that in the past, in the Old Testament as we call it, He worked mainly through individuals like Abraham and Moses and Isaiah the prophet and all those folks. But today, in the New Testament that we're living in, God works to us all because He has come to us all and He empowers us all to do His work. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to to me by revelation. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, 
members of the same body and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them, where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go also and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These are certainly dark times, aren't they? We have long, long nights and short days. We know that they're getting longer, but it's going to be a good while. End of March before the nights and days equal out. It seems to take forever. It just seems dark. And then when the clouds come over, it's darker yet. And then we have the darkness of the coronavirus. This little virus is sneaking up on us invisibly, trying to capture us and kill us. Scary stuff. It's killed so many already and infected many, many, many more. 
dark times. And we have political chaos and people around the world suffering migrants, refugees from war, kids suffering, dark, dark times. But the prophet tells us in the first reading, Lord, your light has come. The glory of the Lord will shine upon you. The glory, the the light. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness its peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you in his glory. His light will appear over you and nations will come to your light. So I think the Lord's trying to tell us Let's think about the light and the bright side. Light is a pretty amazing thing. I remember thinking about times when I've seen sunrises and sunsets. I don't see those too often, but on vacation sometimes, I will get up early, especially when I'm out on the water and take pictures of the sunrise and the sunset and it just keeps changing, it's glorious. Another time when I really noticed the light was another vacation. I was on the Amtrak train from Chicago out west to one of the national parks and we had a sleeper car for the night we were on the train. And early in the morning, I think God woke me up and I looked out the window and the light was just beginning and all of a sudden sunrise and the light spread over the fields of North Dakota, the flat fields, it just went like that, like in two seconds, it just spread out and the world was light again. Pretty amazing. Another vacation experience. I think vacations are good. They give you a chance to calm down and think and meditate and so on. Anyhow, I was on a sailing trip with my sister and brother-in-law and we were at the island of... Now I can't remember it. What was that island? St. Martin. San Martin. And uh, one night we had anchored in a little bay or a big bay and it was dark by this time and my sister said what is that light and all I could see was darkness and one little light out there and I said I don't know but I probably could find out so I went down into the saloon as they call it and took my handy little this is how we wear this my handy little compass this is a hand bearing compass and by sighting in on something we can see a reading and so I aimed at that light and I got about the same reading I get right here 145 degrees And so I took that bearing down to my charts and began to figure out what was going on. And so we have some pictures now. Uh, The first one is there's St. Martin. That's the island where we were anchored. We were up in the upper right-hand bay, that bigger bay that you see there. And uh, the light was down in here somewhere, 145 degrees. So... The next thing I did was to get my hand bearing compass and take that reading. And then I went to the parallel rule, which is the next slide. And the parallel, okay, there's, the, there's a good shot of the hand bearing compass. You can see what that looks like. There's the parallel rule. And uh, it's squished together now, but it also expands. And that's the next slide. There. Now take that parallel rule and go to the chart and the next slide shows you a compass rose, as it's called. It shows all the degrees of the compass in a circle. And so on the next slide you will see that I took the parallel rule and you put one edge 
at the very center of the compass and run that same edge down to the degrees, in this case 145. And then on the next slide you'll see that I expand the rule up to the anchorage on the left where we were and I looked down the rule and there was the light on St. Bart's, St. Bartholomew. And there's a picture of St. Bartholomew, the chart itself that we used. And the light is at Gustavia, the main big city. And it's an expensive place. We just sort of rented this boat and we anchored there, but huge yachts come in there. Mega millions by mega billionaires they cost, and it's pretty amazing. And they don't want those jots to get hurt. And so this particular light has three colors. If the captain of this ship is coming in from the south and it's too early to turn right and head into the bay, he sees a red light, which means don't go in now or you'll hit the rocks. Or if he's up to the north, he sees a green light until he gets down to the place where there's a white light and he, that's the channel that he can enter the bay and all is safe. Lights keep us safe. But we need to know how to use them. It's like prayer. Sometimes God just blasts in and takes us by surprise. He does that with me sometimes in intuitions I get when I suddenly say, oh, okay, thank you. Or sometimes when I'm speaking, preaching, I get this sudden inspiration and say something brilliant that I had never thought of before. And I say, where did that come from? I said, well, it must be God, because it wasn't me. So sometimes God works that way. Sometimes he asks us to use some tools. And tools are prayer, time we set aside just to be with God and to talk to him in our own words, hopefully, but also to listen to him. Like in centering prayer, where we're just silent and let God work in us. And we're never quite sure how much he's worked and whether he has or not, but we believe that he has, and he has prayed in his own words through his spirit. And there are other occasions where we have tools that we use. There's the, at one time in this parish, we had Chrysler's News, his parish, or chirp, or little retreats, where a lot of people got together, or smaller groups got together, and talked about how God was working in their life. And these were marvelous because they let God's light appear stronger and stronger. Curcio is another retreat kind of experience on the diocesan level that does the same thing. Many of you have made Curcios, like I have. And there are other things like attending mass, going to adoration, um, using memorized prayers work for some people. Not all these methods work for everybody. So we have to find the one that works for them. But God has given us tools in order to see the light, learn from the light, know that God loves us, and he wants us to spread his light. So let's just take a few moments to think about how God's light has been working in your life, as I will in my life. And what tools can we use to open ourselves to God's spirit, to God's life working within us?
We believe that God is trying to share his light with us. Let's take a moment to profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, reward all who seek greater wisdom from the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live under the threat of violence, sustain them in hope and help them persevere in, in what is right and good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may grow in our respect for the faith of others, of all religious backgrounds, and find common ground in building a more just and compassionate world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those forced into exile to foreign countries, may they find hospitality and the needed support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Help us to seek out Christ with the same zeal and sacrifice as the wise men of long ago. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all living under the shadow of illness, give them confidence of faith and healing of body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they join the company of saints at the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. Answer us as you see best. Help us accept your answer to our prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we take some of the gifts that God has given us and return them to him as our way of thanking him for all his blessings.
Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Look with favor, Lord, on these gifts of your church, which are offered not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light to the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember all your brother, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory, the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord. And with your spirit. Step down from heaven.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true devotion the mystery in which you have willed to participate, willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.